the more you want something out of someone, right? The more that you stop them from being able to see it themselves and learning and having their own ability to see it. The more you're nagging or pushing for someone to do something, or the more you want to be seen by a partner, get understood by them that you're egoically trying to do it, the more you're not allowing the universe to awaken them. The more you're not letting them have, have time with themselves to understand. So if you're here, I just want to offer you that you're at a place in your life where your next level of ascension is not getting other people to do something. <sighs> Everyone take a deep breath in. We should have probably record numbers. I watched as AEP, people are getting ready for the big magic money event this weekend. I hope you are um, planning to take the weekend off. I promise you that you will shift a lot of things in your perspective um, and, and just kind of even look into the future in a more optimistic um, with tangible proof way that, you know, we're going to build resilience to the highest version of you. Like, I really love that, you know, no matter what the circumstances are, everything's an opportunity for you to find a better version of you that's always existed, but you've never got to be connected to. So I'm really, really, really excited for the magic money event. And we're going to see what can happen to us. Like what what is the higher version of us? Is it someone that needs to spend as much money as we've been spending? Is it someone that needs to stay connected to things that no longer serve us? Like what, what is a more abundant version of us? Not only with our attachment to money, but our attachment to friendships that don't align, our attachment to relationships that don't align. You can even, this is a weird thing. You can even stay in the relationship and lose the attachment. So it's not even just getting rid of everything in the world. It's just undoing the, uh, I need them to change for me. I need them to stop doing this. I need them to apologize. It's all of that baggage that's in your body. Um, I was working with someone. I want you to know, I had three different titles come through for tonight's talk. I had one yesterday. I was like, that, that's it. And then I, then this morning I was doing a one-on-one. -on -one, I'm like, that's it. And then the one on kept going. And I was like, that's it. And the sentence that I was, I was working with someone and they said the sentence, it can't really be that easy. I want to play with something with you. What if it can? I want to balance being able to talk to you about what if life is really easy while still holding complete space and empathy for people in really challenging places. Right. I just want you to play with the combo. I'm not dismissing people in poverty. I'm not not understanding things going on in Ukraine. I'm not uh, just being blind to what's going on and being just a dumb guy, just blatantly saying, oh, life is really easy. But what if we're adding to our life? A lot more pain along with our circumstances by adding it's really hard. Like, what if you start to train yourself, even in really difficult circumstances, to see that life is really easy and fight to make that the truth, like really find the evidence of it? I was working with someone this morning and I noticed, and she's someone who's amazing. She's an amazing client that's been a client of mine for quite a while now. But <clears throat> what I noticed was I would offer a solution and then what she would do is overlook the solution and come up with a yeah, but, and it was almost artistic. Like she was so good at finding where it could go wrong. And there wasn't a yeah, but that she had that I couldn't be like, well, then blah, blah, blah. Right. So no matter what your yeah, but is, there always is a thing. And, and she goes, you make it sound so easy. And it's just occurred to me. One of the reasons my life is the way it is, is because there's a belief it's that easy. And the times that it's hard is when I believe it's hard. <laughs> like that's more of a factor than the circumstances. Right. Like if you understand life is really, really easy and don't get triggered by that, don't get too offended. Or if you are fine, but notice the limitation that you're you're fighting for there. It's not. It's hard. You're screaming that to the universe. I want it to be hard. It can't just be as effortless as Kyle's talking about. And I'm going, what if it can be really good? Like there was a sentence that the client said this morning. It just sounds like it's too good to be true. And I just want to point out that when God said, let there be light, he didn't say, and it was bad. 
It was good. The truth is good. It's too good to be false. I want to play with the idea with you that life is actually supposed to be simple and joyful and playful. And we create a lot of complication so that our ego feels like it has something to fix. Because if you just said, no matter what your circumstances are, I want you to, no matter what, I'm not dismissing your circumstances. I get you could be a million dollars in debt. You have family members that are sick. You could be going through something. You're going through a breakup. Life is hard. Hard. And I want you to just play with the idea for a minute. Still, what if life is really easy? While honoring those things and feeling those things and undoing your enmeshed entanglement vibrationally to those things, right? You can still be present for someone. You can still be love with them. You can do so many amazing things, but you don't have to be entangled vibrationally to them. For instance, let's say you have a dad that you feel a grudge against and you're waiting for an apology, okay? I want to offer you, you don't have to do that, right? If you're just feeling my dad treated me like crap this whole life, blah, blah, blah. The more you want something out of someone, right? The more that you stop them from being able to see it themselves and learning and having their own ability to see it. The more you're nagging or pushing for someone to do something, or the more you want to be seen by a partner, get understood by them, that you're egoically trying to do it, the more you're not allowing the universe to awaken them. The more you're not letting them have, have time with themselves to understand. So if you're here, I just want to offer you that you're at a place in your life where your next level of ascension is not getting other people to do something right? It's not, it's not like trying to control someone, like whatever, how they eat, if they would just do things your way, if they would just understand your point, if they would get your point about what's going on politically, if they would just see you, if they would just apologize, if they would whatever. Your force immediately creates a new wall that they have to get away from. So their next thing would usually be to rebel against what you said. Right. So let's say you're trying to get someone to eat a certain way. Now they're feeling shame in prison. And the next step often for people at that frequency would be to do the opposite of what you want, because they're in a prison that they feel in their body that you triggered in them. So they have to get out of it. So the more you're trying to get seen by a partner, to get understood by a parent, whatever, the more you're not surrendering an egoic, energetic karma that's in your body that's trying to fall out. That's something that's trying to fall out of you. And it doesn't have to fall out through you working through everything with everyone else or getting anyone else to see something or getting anyone else to, to change. You are an elevating being and you don't need anyone to do anything for this energy that feels entangled to other people to fall out, right? Right. So this is my offer is that I want you to see yourself being lifted and making room and you'll see little bits of progress. You'll see like, for instance, I've seen this before. I've heard this story before. Someone really did want their, I was working with someone once who wanted their dad to apologize and the dad didn't apologize, but they called him and he said, Hey, I'm, I'm living by myself. Maybe you can come visit and the kids. And this was a big moment because that made her, as she was telling me about it, she teared up. And then as she was tearing up, she said, but he still didn't apologize. And I watched her leave the feelings, but that was progress. There was just, I'm reaching out. And I want you to know most people aren't doing the work you're doing and don't have nearly the depth or connection to themselves to do it, have way more trauma in their body. And, and just anything is progress to them right? And they're scared. But a lot of people can't own any understanding of you. If you're the more, the deeper you're going, the less more people around you will understand, the less they'll understand you if they're not going there too. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're going deeper and deeper, you have to understand that people that aren't going as deep, that aren't meditating, that aren't on the absolutely everything pass or working with other speakers or doing inner work, you know, re reading a Wayne Dyer book, going inward, whatever, the less that they have the capacity to understand you, 
So as you go deeper, you got to start to understand you and not need anyone to get it. And when you surrender that, that goes away and you start to realize, oh, this is a matter of less work, right? This is a matter of less work. Like, this is why it's easy, right? I just got to stop getting involved. I got to stop getting in the way of it. I need to let them experience what they need to experience and they'll have their own breakthroughs. And some of those people will end up apologizing or understanding you or coming and finally loving you or showing up or eating the way you were hoping or whatever it was, right? But, but this is why it's that easy. It's like, holy shit, there's nothing for you to do. I mean, it's weird if you really think, you know, as I say this, remember, I'm not a doctor. So take this however you want. But it is really weird. If you want to lose weight, you have to do nothing. Just don't eat. <laughs> like, I was thinking about how people are like, you know, I need to get food stored up. Anyone overweight has food stored up. Just so you know, no judgment. But if you're overweight, we got food stored up. I got some food here. I got canned food right here right here is some i got already about a month of food storage right so i just want you to get like that's how easy it is your body will switch to just burning the fat on you right it's that easy just stop doing you literally just don't get in the car and don't go to a restaurant don't do these it's like what's meditation nothing right? Like this is, this is what it is. Meditation is doing nothing. And then everything can get done for you. And the more you go up in vibration, the more you start to get, this is easy. My egoic pattern that I'm addicted to wants to make it complicated so it can fix its own complication. So I honor where you are. I want you to hear it. Both can exist. I'm telling you, you could be in the worst situation. You could be living in a dumpster and in 25 divorces right now while your arm's broken and everything's happening. You're just sitting there with a broken arm going through all 25 divorces, which by the way, I want you to know, that's probably part of the reason you're divorcing is that you were in 24 other marriages. But if you're in a dumpster right now, I'm still seeing you. You're honored right now. I hear you. And I want you to just shift to an energy that says out loud, man, this is easy. You'll have a bunch of egoic evidence. It's not. But what if your egoic evidence is the evidence of what you created from a belief of this is hard? This is a hard life. Life is so complicated. It's so challenging. Life is really difficult. Life is really painful. Right? So what if you say out loud, life is easy. And you just sit with life is easy. And you watch as your anger shows up and patterns show up that are like, no, life is a really complicated, difficult, painful thing. And just watch it. Just fight. It's, it's that easy. It's even easier than I ever saw. It's easier than Kyle's able to say, right? Like really be with that. Life is easy. Holy shit, it's easy. And start embodying that because it's very frequent that I'll work with a client and they'll say something and I'll have a very easy next step that I can offer and go, what would happen if this? And what I notice is they feel this freedom. And when the freedom comes in, they jump on a new problem, right? It's like, I can't just let this freedom come out right? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Like, I can't just enjoy this freedom. There's like a fear. If you grew up in a traumatic household to feel joy, there's a fear to feel free. There's a fear to feel it's effortless because that's death to everything you knew. If you had parents that said life is difficult, constantly were stressing, were abusive, yelling all the time in their pain, whatever, struggling, fighting for struggling, telling you how hard life is, saying the word struggle every other word, you know, or just victim-y sentences, right? I want to offer you freedom to just say the sentence out loud, even if you have no evidence of it, even if you have no idea where that is. I want you to even make it easier than you need proof of it, right? That part of you that needs proof. Well, where's, where's the evidence? It's easy. That's more work than you need. Are you getting that? Even that's more work than you need. I need to find evidence that it's easy.
that's too much work. That's a lot of struggle. Just feel that it's easy for a second in a new moment, this moment, just sit there in your dumpster on your laptop. Uh, just, just going through divorce 25. This is life is hell. I'm a million dollars in debt. I'm bleeding out the ear. Life is, e I, I don't know what you're signing on bleeding out the ear, but like my point is you just say life is easy. Just override it. It's freeing. Life is joy. And then don't know for a second where the proof of that is. Just open, right? Just now, now. Maybe, maybe it'll start by just letting go of something that's not yours. Oh, if it's easy, maybe, maybe that, that person's opinion of me isn't mine to deal with. Maybe it is easy. If life is easy, uh, maybe there's new ways that are trying to show up that I don't see. Maybe I'm already forgiven. Maybe the other person's already forgiven. If life's easy, I'm free. I don't know what that looks like, but maybe I don't need to know what that looks like. Maybe looking was the old me, right? I just feel freedom. Ooh, I feel sad. Don't egoically stop it. Like, feel it. I was talking to a client recently and she was having a hard time with people that eat meat. And she said, I just want to go and stop them all because of the animals. And I said, I hear you. And that's an honored point. And I absolutely hear it. What if you felt for them versus just ran out and stopped everyone? And she started bawling. She had no idea that there was also just feelings of sadness for the world. And what if that raised her vibration? And what if that changed something versus you being on the same angry, fight it frequency everywhere? <clears throat> if it calls to you to do that, I support it. And at the same time, what if a lot of actions come from not quite letting yourself feel? And what if, if you could feel everything you're feeling? If you could feel everything you're feeling, right? There's room for easier. If you're feeling overwhelmed with circumstances in your life, in your marriage, in your family, whatever, what are you feeling right now? What are you feeling? Most people don't even know that. I'll ask people that and they'll go, I feel that they won't like it if I, they'll be mad if I, you don't even know you. You don't even know what you feel. You're there for them. I feel like my partner won't even allow me. I feel like I'll be in trouble from my mom. Whoa, that's not yours. Even if you have a lifetime of practice that that's yours, that's not yours. Jen says, I feel fear about being broke. It's even easier than that. Take off about being broke. I feel fear. Just feel fear and be with it. I feel so sad. Feel it. By the way, if we don't do that, this is what creates panic attacks and anxiety, right? Like this is what creates it. It's like your actioner is the prevention of these feelings. So we start with life is easy. You had nothing to do. You got everything to feel. You got everything to see. You got everything to surrender. Your need to control another person. Your need to be seen. Your need to have an apology. Your need to whatever, fix something. It's even easier than that. It's so much easier than that. Jessica says, I feel so overwhelmed. Allow it. Be overwhelmed. Just be here. Because you'll notice you're not overwhelmed. You're here. The pattern that's making everything chaos is overwhelmed. The thing in the past and the future is overwhelmed. Unless Jessica... At the moment right now, you have some life version of whack-a-mole where while you're watching this, in this moment, a person's popping up, yelling at you, another one screaming, another one's breaking a vase at the store you're sitting at, another person's freaking out, and the house is on fire. That's the only way you could really be overwhelmed in the moment. And still, even if those are happening in this moment, you don't have to control them. 
your pattern's overwhelmed because it has an unconscious belief that it's responsible for everything outside of you. But God's got a lot of it. Sad is, is a graduation. That's beautiful. Let yourself just be here. It's easy. Just try it. It's easy. And the pattern that's mad, that's been a lifetime of struggle and overcoming and proving something. And then I'm something that's so mad at me for saying it's easy. I hear you and you're honored too. And I love you. You're honored, like you did a ton of work until you have a higher awareness. And I want to talk to you now about how everything you did was at the highest awareness you ever had. If I offered my daughter the choice of a $100 bill or a vegan gluten-free donut, I know she'd pick the donut. Why would she pick the donut? Because her awareness hasn't graduated right? To a place where she understands that a hundred dollar bill could buy a bunch of the donuts, right? That's just about her awareness. And that's because she's four and that's where her awareness is. But just so you know, everything you've done before now was still the highest you knew at the awareness you were at, which is why every decision you've ever made was the highest awareness you've ever had, which is why Guilt is a waste of time. Your awareness, did you get that? Your awareness was always the highest, highest that you had. Stephanie says a question out of a certain level of awareness, right? We're all at a certain level. And we're all at different ones, but it's all perfect. How do you not let that awareness paralyze you? Stephanie's belief is that awareness can paralyze you. At this moment, it could change in a second. But if you understand and you bring in the concept of life is easy, your awareness can also free you. It can free you from the need to control things on the third density physical plane. You're not here to control those things. As you go up in awareness and you move into your butterfly, you are not here to get caterpillars to do anything. You need to surrender the caterpillars of the world you can have love for them, you can hear them, you can bring love to their life, but you need to understand that almost every person here has probably graduated emotionally past the level of your parents. So even though you were raised thinking that they had the answers for you, as you keep going, you have to understand if you're meditating, doing this work, and then they're stuck at their frequency, which often happens as, from older people, often, not always, they have a stuckness there and they're like, okay, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with that shit down while you're freeing yourself. So you need to understand that you don't need to be seen by other people who aren't on the same level. And I don't mean that out of judgment. I just mean right now, you need to understand that right now there's a higher frequency in you that's actually free, right? And not in a place of needing to maneuver the external. Because if you have that, then you're still kind of one foot in the old world. Everything's okay. Can you say it out loud? Everything's okay. I'm telling you, even if your pants are literally on fire, and I don't mean the liar, liar thing. I mean, just your pants are on fire right now. Say everything's okay. You'll still gently do what you need to do to pour water on the fire pants and get it out. But it's that egoic thing that says this shouldn't be. Take, take a deep breath in. I want you to know everything you did before now and everything you're doing right now is at a certain level of awareness. And every day your awareness is growing. Your awareness is growing through these calls, through meditation, through life experiences, through making choices. You can't not grow. Are you with me? You can't not grow. You can't not ascend. It's impossible. The more you try to live the old way, the faster it hurts, the more you're screaming about it, you're always ascending. I want you to just be in surrender knowing you're always ascending. So you don't constantly egoically say, how do I ascend? You make some decisions that match the ascending, but life is doing its ascending with you. And you have this amazing opportunity 
to follow it or fight it. And the more you fight it, the more you'll get tired and then you'll end up following it. So you're all the way free, but you got to receive that. No, you don't. You don't even have to receive it. <laughs> you don't have to. And life will go, okay, well, we'll let them fight me. And then they'll, they'll let go. It's that easy. Life's got you. God or the universe has got you. Feel here, just feel here. And feel the illusion of nothing is happening for a second. The more you can connect to that vibration of, well, nothing's happening, the more everything's happening. It's happening so big you can't see it, right? That, that nothing's happening sometimes will start to bring feelings of darkness and pain. Boy, is that something happening, right? It's bringing up something that you thought was you and it's bringing it to the surface. It could bring up a trigger with a partner. It could bring up really dark energies. It could bring up whatever. Dude, the, I'm still fasting every other day. The first day I fasted, it was depressing. I was like sad. I realized I was like, listen, I'm not physically hungry. I'm just really sad that I can't escape to a Chinese restaurant, you know? And then I was like, where are you escaping to? And then it went from really depressed to free. Wow, I would never have been able to monitor that something was happening. I just felt different and I felt freer. And then a couple of days later, I felt clearer and I felt joyful. And then I noticed 10 days into it that I loved the fasting days all of a sudden. I loved like hearing what my body wants more than what my pattern wants and then honoring it. Deep breath in. So Narina, if I have the name right, says, I feel scared that something might go wrong in my body. Everything like that is a pattern. Allow that fear to be there. You're allowed to be scared in my body. I love you if something goes wrong in the body. This brings a new, even higher healing energy to it because its biggest fear is if something goes wrong, it's not loved, right? And it's a fear of death, which isn't a thing. So we can keep going and go to this place where it's just like, there's patterns of fears of death that are even not about physical death, right? Meaning like you associate death to everything. If someone talks crap or I go broke or whatever, if I'm blamed for something, if I fail on this career, so Helen just said, I feel like Kyle has a level of privilege that most of us do not have. And what I said, it was, I honor that I don't know everyone's circumstance, but I also want to honor the level that we fight for our limitations. So even if I do have that privilege and I don't understand other people's circumstance, which is something I can't help if that's the case, I want to offer people that are saying and defending how hard that they have it, that even if they do have it hard, that defending that is adding to the hard. It's adding to it. It's another level. When people say to me, and no matter what, I see you as God, right? I'm saying I see you as God. And they're like, yeah, it's not that easy. I'm literally, I've had where I'm working with clients and literally see ways out and freedom. But that defense, you don't know my story though, which doesn't exist in this moment. You're just me. We're the same. My story is I went through this, I went through this, I went through this. As I've always said, and I want to really say this so everyone hears this, I, everything you got from your past, everything, it's not as big as you. I get it could be huge. It's not that it's not seen. It's that I see you. Your story is huge. Your pain is huge. And you're bigger. I hear you. I hear how bad it is. I hear how much it sucked. I will sit with you and um, I will hear and we will cry it out together. And then what's on the other side of that? I remember when Michael Beckwith was just out of the park, you know, every time I went to Agape, he was just so good. I love Michael Beckwith. If you've never been to Agape, you got to hear him and see him. He's magic. You can stream it all the time. He's amazing. He said, think of what your problems are facing. 
you know, you always think you have to face these problems. He goes, think of what your problems are facing. And I was like, oh, so I've had dark anxiety. And like, what's it facing right now? The power of me. I'm telling you, you I, your whole history, I hear you. You could have grown up in a horrible situation. You could have been through trauma that I would never understand. I get it. I honor that. And I see the magic of you even bigger. I see you bigger. Join me in seeing you bigger than anything that's ever happened to you. Just take a second. Even, I don't care. It's a thing you could be stuck in right now. It could be a thing that you think is a thing that's never been fixable for your whole life. I want you to take in, even if you don't understand how, just the idea that is nowhere as big as what you are. And watch how you feel when you embody that as true. You could be sitting there going, I don't know what this looks like, but I know that I'm bigger than that torture I went through in my child and childhood, than that time dad left, than that physical abuse, whatever you got. I hear you. There's no dismissing that, but stop dismissing what you are also. Stop dismissing what you are also. This whole now is bigger than your entire story. Find it with me. Let's deep breath in. I love you guys.